I'm joined by Josh Vitters of the Bridgeport Bluefish, formerly of the Chicago Cubs. Josh, you are third overall pick by the Chicago Cubs. Only guys ahead of you were David Price and Mike Moustakis, so pretty good company. What was that like to be a third overall selection out of high school and to be selected that high? Uh, it was amazing. I mean, it was really the start of a dream come true for me, and uh, it was really... It was really amazing to be up there and to receive the jersey and do everything on TV like that. It was really awesome and uh, a little overwhelming at first, too, as well. But, I mean, uh, I've learned a lot, and uh, it it's done a lot to get me to where I am today, and I'm really thankful for it. Yeah. Now, being a third overall pick out of high school, that comes with a lot of expectations and pressure. Did you feel that pressure and expectations coming up through the minor leagues that you would have to, um, you know, reach that um like potential well i did to an extent i mean uh after after a while you kind of just get used to it and go out there and play and uh that's what you got to do i mean you got to get past all the the numbers games and everything and just kind of go out there and learn how to be yourself regardless of the expectations yeah now like you mentioned before you were on tv when you got drafted the first person ever to be on tv you're on mlb network what was that like when you shook bud selig's hand because price and musakis didn't show up and then you were also on baseball america that year that's really awesome uh, accomplishments so talk about that yeah i mean it was really cool i mean I, I i used to read baseball america sometimes so it was cool to see myself on it and uh being up there meeting Bud was really cool. Holding up the Cubs jersey, it'll be it's a moment I'll never forget. I mean, it was great to be able to spend it with my parents as well. Yeah. Now, coming through the minor leagues and even now, you receive a ton of different advice from coaches, hitting advice, defensive advice. How do you pick and choose which tips and advice works for you, you know, hearing all different, like, um, suggestions by people? Well, first off, you just got to you gotta trust yourself and listen to your body, and uh, you got to be your, your own best coach, really. And then from there, you can take bits and pieces from guys with experience and guys that have been there and uh, really just kind of kind of create your own formula for what's, what works. And uh, I mean, I think it's just a work in progress for, for most guys. It's c c continuously changing, and uh, you just got to be ready to make the next adjustment. Yeah. Now, couple, coming up in the minor leagues, being a big prospect, I'm sure there are, it got crazy with fans sometimes or autograph seekers coming to basically come to games to see you or to interact with you how crazy did they get um coming up through the minor leagues yeah it was it was crazy there was a lot of a lot of autograph people and uh a lot of that but i mean it was really just an honor to be able to have people want your autograph and uh come there with your cards i mean it was it was exciting it was definitely was and uh i'll uh i i really enjoy signing for people so it was really it wasn't a big big deal or anything mm -hmm. but it, it was fun and it was exciting and it was, it was an honor as well. So as a nine year selected for the MLB Futures game, obviously a well-regarded game with some of the top prospects. What did that honor mean to you and talk about that experience at the Futures game? Oh, it was great. I mean, it was just something that it was, it was nice to make, it, make an accomplishment. It was my first kind of accomplishment after I got drafted to where I, it was my play that earned my way to the Futures game, which is really cool. And, uh, you know, it was just fun to get to meet the guys from different organizations and uh, just kind of interact with them. And it was just a great experience playing at uh, at the at Bush Stadium too. It was it was really nice. It was amazing. We had a long rain out, but it was fun. We had fun in the clubhouse, and it was just a really great experience. 2012, you were called up by the Chicago Cubs. Talk about how you found out you're getting called up to the major leagues and what that crazy day was like for you getting to Los Angeles t uh, to join the Cubs for their Dodgers series. Yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. It was uh, it was actually a pretty late night after a game. I found out and uh, I had to kind of pack up my whole life that was in Iowa was and that. bring it with me. And I was on a plane really early the next morning, so I didn't even I didn't even sleep. I got zero hours of sleep oh, before my God. before my first my first major league at bat. But I mean. That's how it is. You you just got to get there, and uh, it had to fly across across the U.S. and get to L.A., which was awesome. It's where I'm where I'm from originally, yeah. so my parents and my my close family got to be there and see it. So uh, yeah, it was just it was really amazing. It was a, a real whirlwind of events that that happened, and uh, I'm just glad that I got to take it in as much as I did. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're up with the Cubs, you got 12 hits in your career with them, including a home run off former Bluefish, actually, Mark Rogers. What are some of the moments that stand out to you from your time in the majors, wearing that Cubs logo every day and playing in a historic ballpark like Wrigley Field? 
Yeah, you know, just the the playing at Wrigley was amazing. I mean, it was it's a great park to play in. It's like playing a backyard baseball game. I mean, at the time, the field wasn't in the best shape, but it was still just amazingly historic, and you got the chills every time you were on the field. Oh, yeah. So it was really cool just being there, hitting BP on the field, hanging out in the clubhouse, just being a whole part, being a part of that was was really amazing. And it's fun to see what the Cubs are doing this yeah. year, and they're they're kicking butt and. I'm rooting for them, it's, mm-hmm. so it's it's just it was just mainly just being a part of that rich organization that was the part that I'll remember. Yeah. And who were some of the coaches or players um, over there that really took you under uh, their wing while you're in the organization? Uh, well, there's there was a few guys. I mean, uh, I Darwin Barney was always one that helped me out, and uh, Alfonso Soriano was yeah. a great guy, and uh, he was. He was just a really, really nice, happy guy, and uh, he had a lot of uh, good advice. And just watch, watching the guy, you could learn a lot as well. Who were some of the toughest pitchers you uh, played against in your career? Um, well, I faced Aroldis Chapman, I think, four or five times when I was up, and he was definitely tough, uh, especially when he was throwing p- other pitches besides the fastball, like his 96-mile-an-hour yeah. cutter and stuff. So. I, I got I struck out a few times off him and he was definitely the toughest pitcher I've faced. Yeah. Final question. You're here now in Bridgeport playing from the Bluefish in the Atlantic League, some say the top tier of independent baseball. What are your thoughts so far on the talent level here in the Atlantic League so far and uh, your situation here in Bridgeport? Well, it's nice. It's just nice to have a to have another team to play for and to be out here playing against very good competition. I mean it's definitely like a a high, higher minors type league and uh, it's good to be out here competing and uh, refining my skills to get to where I want to be again. Appreciate it Josh. Wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you.